Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorced mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Now, this episode is a basic but important episode, and if you miss doing this, it can cost you. And it's the importance of record keeping, the what, why, when, and how of doing it right for you, whether you're going to court or whether you're just going to mediation, but when to do it. And the secret is right from the start. Hello, mum. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Laura. I've just you given just, away the whole I was podcast. going to say, you just, <laughs> spoiler alert. I know. Hello, you, everyone. <laughs> you said to me, you want to do the what and then the how first. And I yeah. understand that, but I've said, no, we need to do the when first, because mm. I want people who maybe listen to our podcast all the time yep. to not skip this episode because yep. they think it's not relevant to them because mm. record keeping matters no matter where you are in the yep. process, but it's really important at the beginning, right? That's right. But if you haven't done it from the beginning, start now. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be talking about it and then you've obviously got some homework to do listeners at home. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yep. Or in cars. Don't do it in the car, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Let's do the when and then we'll do the why. So we've just said you've got to do it. As from soon, the get-go. From the get-go, if, you, if you're up to it. If not, then as soon as you feel well enough, just start. And it doesn't, you know, it's. you might think you won't need it, but just get started. It's much easier to record stuff as and when it happened. Mm. You don't have to do long, long journal entries, but, yeah, just keep track. So but it doesn't all have to be documents. When is now? Now is the time. That's right. Now is okay. the time. Yep. All right. Why? Why do we need to be documenting things? Why do the listeners right now yep. who might not be anywhere near court, who've just separated mm-hmm. or they're still living under the same roof mm-hmm. or they go into mediation, why do they need to be documenting? Look, I think that the reason is that in these sort of stressful times, emotional times, you're not going to remember exactly what happened in a week's time, particularly coercive control situations, people don't remember what happened because they block it out. So um, you you need to write it down so that in the future you can refer back to it and it's a contemporaneous note. If you ever find a contemporaneous yeah, note what's means, contemporaneous sorry, means it was done at the time that it happened. If you sit down in three or four months and write down what happened, it's not treated as reliably by by any court as something that you wrote on that very day that it happened or so, the day after. So in Australian courts. In Australian course, courts, yeah. yeah, but just generally. Yeah. Um, if you watch any cop shows or court shows, the police will refer to their notes, which they made at the time. That's the important document. So sometimes it's just your word against the other person's, but if you can produce a diary note from that period of time, which may be years before or a year before, whatever, um, that gives your your recollection or your story more, um, I don't know, it just gives it more weight. It looks like it's truer. And also your mind can play tricks on yourself, mm. on you. And, play, oh, you know, that was, that was we did it on Wednesday um, on that year, Wednesday, and then we get the records and it shows it wasn't on Wednesday, it was Thursday, and the, and the client goes, I could have sworn it was Wednesday. Well, you just did swear it was Wednesday in your affidavit, mm. but... You didn't do it maliciously. It's just your mind plays tricks. So it'll help you referring back to stuff that happened at the time. Um, and it also may be useful in proving to other people. Okay. Well, let's talk about the why then. It, mm. Do you need to document? So we, we get it. You need to document if you're in a, a domestic violence situation mm. or a family violence situation or coercive control. I get that because then you can say, look, here are some of the incidences that occurred. Do you need to document if, it, if you're just sorting out property? It, it doesn't hurt if you've spent extra money, say, on getting the place ready or if you've um, taken some money from the account um, to use on your living expenses, maybe you, you can keep a track of what you've spent mm-hmm. so that because the court will often say, well, you took $50,000, what did you do with it? And you go, oh, you know, I spent it on living. Well, prove it, you know. And in those cases, you'd be keeping receipts and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yes, for property, because mm-hmm. cause we, as we've talked about in our episode, which I'll link, mm. we've got future needs, um, but also contributions before, during yes. and after the marriage. Yeah. So there's an episode where we talk about what did you contribute after 
the yeah, marriage that's right. and that matters so and what did you waste after the marriage so yeah, yeah. <laughs> time yeah. no but yes waste. so so writing down um what it is Just that money you spent yeah and then when it comes to kids why is it documenting oh, important in, in in important then terribly important uh then because um if the children arrangement immediately after separation is perhaps very generous or, or fair between the two of you even if that's the case and you're doing 50-50, write it down because later on if something comes up and you have to change from 50-50 um, and you need to make a different arrangement, uh, the other person uh, may try to make out it was always a, a problem, whereas you can go, no, we used to get along well, here's my diary notes or, you know, right. so that's important. Or if you were the one who was getting the children 50-50 and suddenly they've cut off, then you know, you need to be able to say, no, look, here here's we my proof do here's this. the documents yeah so it just becomes very relevant so documenting who has the kids and when yeah um who spends money for the children Absolutely. And when. if you want to yes for child support yeah. purposes okay. so and if you're the one taking them to um you know baseball or if you're the one who takes them to art classes mm -hmm. and just keep a little track so we're going to go into in depth into the mm. what in a minute but mm. so anything about kids say say you write down, you, you sit in a diary and you write, okay, I had the children today, I had them for the week or yeah. I had them today, I had them today. And then you go to court or you're in mediation and you're fighting for something, then they will happily look at that and yeah, take and that, as, show that. Yep. as some sort of proof. Yeah, particularly now to remember though, if you're using a, a diary like that so as a, a note for you for using in court or, or just so uh, about contentious things, uh, things mm. that you might argue about in the future, don't make that your personal diary as well yes. because you can't just reveal one entry. Yeah. If you do, say, attach a photocopy of a page yeah. to an affidavit or try to show one page to somebody, they're entitled to have the whole book because yes. you've brought it into evidence. So make a specific yucky book. And we're going to go into the how in a <laughs> yeah. minute, Mum. Yeah. But why might... Can you think of some other reasons why people might need diary proof or documentation proof? Sometimes with Centrelink. Okay. I need to know, particularly if you're separated under one roof, mm -hmm. um, about that. Um, separation date. Yes, separation date. That needs to be date. documented. Um, and we did talk about domestic violence. And yes. And we talk about the children and, and what times and how much you spend. That's probably about it. Okay. I don't All think right. that I can think of so anything So it's really, else. it's just really, uh, if anyone's out there and they've got an amicable mm. situation, they're like, well, do I really need to document? Mm. Yes, you do for property, for contributions after and keeping that all sorted out, who's getting the house done and it's but, like insurance but also yeah it's like it's so and, and you might be amicable now but we have seen a lot of our mm. members and a lot of people that have called out and reached out for help where it was all going fine they separated everything was good and then someone got a boyfriend someone got a girlfriend or someone, the house they don't want to sell the house and all of a sudden someone says no to somebody all of a sudden <laughs> it's a big deal and then the kids and and the 50 50 goes up in the yeah. air and that's why you kind of have to just be like yeah Yes, I think we're going to be fine. We're going to go through mediation and sort this out. But just in case, yes. I am going to keep a documentation of this because in the future I might be thanking myself a million times over for doing it. Yeah, you never know when it will become come in handy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, and we'll talk about the different types of personalities as well mm. and how documentation helps with that at the end. But let's talk about what now, I know you've just said we document events, mm -hmm. so in a diary, or, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about how to do it, but what other things classes documentation that people should perhaps be keeping around? Oh, okay. So so your bank statements will be revealed in court, um, but if you've been, like, drawing out cash out of your bank accounts, you might want to keep a little record of what you spent it on. It's probably good tactics anyway. You know, we talk about people having a different budget when they're on their own. It's mm. great because you've got control of your money for the first time probably in a long time without working with someone else. Um, so keep your receipts, keep your dockets. Um, but I don't want um, people to obsess over these things. Mm. So um, I've seen everything from um, a little tiny black, a tiny little black, hand diary you know the little pocket diaries and there was just a single letter k on the pages that this person was having the children mm. um and and that was fine that, yeah that just helped so, calculate things so yeah. that's one thing document when you have the kids yeah 
what are other things you can document about kids? And I know you're saying don't be obsessed about doctors, it. Doctors, yep. When you, when you took them to the doctors, yep. medical things. Yep, school photos. Schools. Yep, sort of, yeah, just I was called to the school today because of, you know, it's not that you can't get evidence of these things. These things are in the records of the school, but it's nice for you to have, just have a little note. Or yes. if you've picked someone up early and later on someone, you'll never know what will come up in an affidavit. Mm. Say, oh, you know, he even picked the children up early on this day. And you might say, well, yes, because I picked them up early because we had to go to this mm. function or had to do this. So if you've got a manipulative and controlling person mm. and they're trying to paint you in a bad light and they haven't listened to our Tell It to the Judge episode yeah. <laughs> where they're like, it does, some of the things that don't mm. matter, but they might be saying, oh, I've always looked after the children. I've always picked them up from school. Um, you can then, if you've got your diary, you can say, well, actually, no, I picked them up on this date, this date, yep. this date, this date. But also documentation of medical appointments, yep. things like and, that. And photo, yep, that's true. And photos, uh, um, your iPhone photos are good documentation mm, as mm. well. Um, sometimes text messages is keeping documentation as well. Yep. Just sort of just keep track of it all. Well, that's, and I think that's the key because I know some people who uh, have gone through eventually got into court and mm. gone through it like and obviously that mediation didn't work etc cetera, etc cetera. but they've gone through to court and then they've had to go and fill in the gaps yes but sometimes if someone has been like i did a tiktok the other day how long's your court case been yes. going for how long was your court case people are saying two five oh my ten gosh. years and and oh. i for the life of me if if you were about to go to a trial and you had been trying to negotiate and mediate for four years you are not going to be able to scroll through your phone and find the photo from 20, well, you could, but it takes a long, would yeah. be taking a long time, from 2022 when it's 2028 or whatever. So it's a good idea when it comes to documentation. If you want to save yourself the heartache, if you feel like you've got a photo of something that may be relevant, stick it in a folder. Yeah. yeah and I guess we'll talk about yeah, that, that's right. the how. But w- when it comes to property, what kind of things should people be documenting? Okay, so if you're leaving the house, yeah. okay, um, I would video every room and find out what's been left behind mm. in the house, uh, video what you've taken. Yeah. Um, I say video rather than photos because um, we're sitting in your lovely little office, Laura, here, and uh, if I was to take a photo of everything that was in here, <laughs> I'd miss stuff <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you'd naturally take a photo of the the computer, the printer, yeah, right. But I might not take photos of the some plant. of your other collectibles, and or then the charge box. Yes, yeah. and and they may come in handy. So a video of each room is just gives more more effect. If you've, um, we'll talk about manipulative and controlling. But I've had cases where uh, the person who left didn't take much at all, mm. but the person who was in the house disappeared some of the things and said mm. that the other person took it. So you just have to protect yourself. It's really hard when you've been in an intimate relationship with someone to think of them as kind of uh, maybe dodgy or maybe... The enemy the or enemy, yeah, trick you. But still, so it's just, it just makes it safer. And a quick video in each room Doesn't just solves anybody. that problem and it may become relevant later on. Yeah. The number of times that people go, oh, but no, we, we didn't do that on that date no no we were still together well I say have you got a photo of it have you got yeah you know I left that behind for them well have you got your video Mm. yeah so you're saying a really good idea if you're legally allowed to so if you're in a different country obviously Mm. check your laws Mm. but in Australia you can walk through your house and And video video. everything yeah and have it as a reminder because it's a record in Mm. in four years time you're not going to remember what was in the living room and a lot of the people that we've come across they separate and then it just drags on and drags Mm -hmm. on and then maybe one day it'll end up in court if they don't and they're not going to remember what was in the house but their ex might be in the house but they're sure as heck not going to let you in to have a look that's right and they'll do sometimes they deny things so they're Mm. okay so video everything in the house Mm-hmm. What about what other things can you do for property? Uh, what about uh, documentation wise? Yes, I, I use an app on my phone for scanning. Mm-hmm. So some things still come in paper. 
Yeah. Um, so I'd be scanning superannuation statements as at the date of separation. Right. Because, again, if you don't settle it for a couple of years, your super may grow, mm-hmm. and that's your own contribution, not the other person's. Um, sure, you might be able to subpoena those records, but it's just so much handier to have it all sorted. And we've got a free checklist, yep. before you go checklist, that you can download off our website at www.thedivorcecourse.com.au. And it has a list of the document that might be very helpful for yes. you. You might not ever need them. No. But a lot of people would have been a, have a lot cheaper divorce yeah. and a lot shorter Absolutely. divorce property settlement if they'd taken a photo or scanned these. Yes. And photos are good enough as well. Um, yeah, people in Australia. Kick, in Australia. People are kicking themselves yes. a lot. That you, you think it isn't going to be an issue. Uh, so you don't. And also a lot of people say, I'm not going to touch their super. I promise I'm not going to touch Nevertheless. their super. Nevertheless. But take a photo anyway. Yeah. Because a lot of people change their minds. That's right. Because it's not fair. And you can always delete them later yep. on. But yep. just have that insurance. Yes. So video the house, mm. take photos or scan the um, documents mm-hmm. in, our, in our checklist. Uh, what other things for property? Receipts, mortgage yeah. payments. Yeah, those sort of things. But, I mean, a lot of those are online mm. as well. But, you know, you never know. Or who your insurance is with, your your um, your medical benefits and medical right. insurance. Now, when it comes to paying for things, mm. so after separation, in, in our other episodes, mm. you've said that after separation is treated differently to while you're together. That's right. So if, for example, someone's ex has just gone off, gone gone on a midlife crisis, yes. got a new girlfriend, gone to a different state and is doing crazy things, living mm-hmm. their life, and they've left you with the house, the kids, all the bills. Mm-hmm. So if they kept a copy of all the payments they've made That's for the right. children yep. and all the payments they've made for the house yes. and maybe had like a little spreadsheet, when they go to mediation and they do property settlement, that can be added That's back? That's right. It, it's a post-separation contribution. If you don't document it, yes. you can't quantify it. Yeah. And if you can't say the amount, you can't ask for it back. So in a mediation, you can't say it gets it swept go, under oh, the he, carpet. He left, he didn't pay for anything. It was not fair. Yeah, it, and if you stop right there. They go, well. So, yes, sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. But if you go. He left, he didn't pay for anything. Here's a spreadsheet. of And all here are all my fees, receipts all the... and the things that I've paid in the last six months. It becomes part of the story. Right. And and so if you don't have that documentation, the, the court just deals on the stuff you, you're putting your attention to and mm-hmm. the mediator is. But once you've quantified and proved it, mm-hmm. then it's got a better chance of coming into the property pool. Now, one thing, and I know we haven't got onto how yet, and we will, we've got mm. some great strategies on how to document all mm. of this. But one thing we talk about in our course that's important and one thing that people are discovering they need to kind of show the court or mediator during negotiations is their budget or their expenses. Yes. So there's a form, isn't there? Yes. That people have to fill in called a... So in Australia, there's a form called a financial statement. Mm -hmm. Um, You can download it with the do-it-yourself kit. Mm -hmm. Um, When we ask clients to fill in that document or help us filling in the document... Um, there's a lot of eye rolling going on, not the lawyers, the clients, and they can often get stuck uh, because they're calculating things. And um, because you have to put per week. Because it's basically showing your budget. Yes, and it's showing what spending you're doing. Hands up any listeners right now who has a budget. I don't think there's that many people out there. Your hand's not up. (laughs) (laughs) I do actually now. I do now. But but it is is the last thing you would want to do in the world if you are going through a horrible divorce Mm -hmm. to sit down and do a budget. And I get that. Mum gets that. Mm, But we've said it a million times to our members when you do it, because in the end you have to do it anyway. Well, that's right. When and you do it, you feel like you have a bit more control and a bit more power yes. in your life. And you can modify it as you need to, and you can put what I call the magic E in front of things estimate. where you're estimating. Yeah. Um, and you can put not known if you really don't know. But I'd rather our listeners be doing it early yes. than waiting until they have to go to court, the documents are being done and then the... Or mediation. Or mediation. And someone says, hey, you've got to fill in this form and it can be quite daunting. Well, I know a lot of people just don't. I, I, yeah. I remember I had to fill in a financial statement thingy and I was just like, 
or luckily, mm. <laughs> I have now got a budget. So it was easy for me because I mm. went, okay, here it is, here it is, here it is, and plugged in the numbers. But in the end, what we're basically saying is for mediation yeah. or for, You'll need or for court, for everything. you're going to have to yeah. fill it in. And it is a good tool, isn't it, to negotiate, yeah. to say, look, this is how much my expenses are. Mm. And it's it's also part of your case. So you will always, like, yes, these are my expenses. Yeah. Um, that's very much a, an important part of your case right from the beginning. And you don't know what to ask for if you don't know what your financial situation is. Mm-hmm. So there's a part of the of the financial statement called part N, N for November, N. I love that you know that off the top of your head. I wish I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd rather be able to, like, know all the words <laughs> my favourite songs. Yeah. But anyway, so... You're invited to our free webinar. Whether you're stuck at the beginning of deciding to divorce or you're struggling to find your way through the legal jargon and fear of the unknown of the legal process, we are here to empower you to take control. Join us to learn what steps you can take followed by a live Q&A where you get Lynn, my amazing mum and family law accredited specialist to answer your questions. All you have to do is go to www.thedivorcecourse.com.au and click on reserve my seat. Register now for our free webinar to help you make the best decision for your future. We'll see you there. Hurry, spaces are limited, so don't miss out. Register today. Part N has a list of all of the the expenses and what's good about it is it's stuff you would normally forget and so it tells you to fill it in. You've got to fill it in total and how much of it is for you and how much of it is for the kids and it's got things like school uniforms, Mm. education. It doesn't have vet vet, veterinary fees and things so those are things you might have to add. It's got hobbies, magazines, gifts, everything. So you fill that all in. in. the financial statement, it cares about what you spend on gifts. If you fill in part N. Part N. Because that's the part you fill in for spouse maintenance. Right. Um, And if there's, um, yeah, I guess spouse maintenance or adult child maintenance. However, um, I find it handy to fill in because you've got it then. It is your budget as well. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And it does show if you're living um, if it's going to cost you too much to live, mm. at, that you don't have enough income, you can use that as part of your future needs argument. And yes. you can show how, you know, that you're being quite modest yeah. with your expenses. Yeah. Or you can have a look and go, well, I maybe can't put $200 a week away for holidays well, anymore. Well, it's, it's a good comparison as well. If you mm. have got a very wealthy yeah. past life yeah. you could put it at show what you used to spend your money on yes you got your nails done your eyelash yeah. extensions your hair all of that racks up a lot of money yeah and then you can show look i've had to give all of that up mm. to continue to live and support yeah. the children look at the difference between my living expenses now and then so you, i'm not asking mm. for much no so i think uh, and it also helps with child support i believe if you need to great it does do, do um the form to ask for special circumstances you'd be surprised how often it comes up yeah. about your expenses so in the end when we're saying document your expenses and do a budget inverted commas we're really just saying Write down what it is you're spending your money on. Yeah. And there are some great apps that you can oh. use. So let's go into the how people should be documenting it. Okay. So there's some great apps. I mean, even I'm not going to say any bank names on here because <laughs> I don't want to brand any banks, but uh, there are banks that automatically categorize your spending yes. from your account and they actually do it for you. <laughs> Um, or one, you, one yeah. of mine does it in a pie chart. Oh gosh, it's very confronting. <laughs> yeah, let's not look at pie charts. But but really, but that's what you can do. You could get an automated mm. one. You can get ones um, like there's a there's a thing called Zero, uh, and you can get that relatively cheap. It pulls things through and categorizes yes. stuff for you. For you yeah. Or you could just once a month sit down, go through your bank statement, and have a list different categories. This is how much I spent mm. on kids clothes this is how much I spent on food this is how and just Mm. categorize it because then when you come to doing those financial documents to mediation or court when they say how much a month do you spend on this you you can just open your spreadsheet up and that's in an ideal world because let's be fair you're crying and dealing with moving and things like that but it will Mm. save your bacon well it will and as though a spreadsheet could be a little bit um, it's unnecessary from the court's point of view because yes. I think the judge's eyes sort of glaze over at a spreadsheet. Right. They work in terms of this financial statement. If it's in that part N, yep. that 
fits the the way that they think. Yeah. So and you know, also Laura, you're saying go and get part N. Yeah. And start download, doing it now. Do it now. That Ooh. that can be your budget. I love it when clients do that. Because okay. Then the well, we'll put a link done. to the document. Okay. That's relevant as of this. Yeah. Yes. Because they do change. They things. do from time to time. But we'll put a link to that document if you're in Australia. Um, maybe and WA is slightly different, but download not it much different. and you might as well just start. Yes, you might as well and use that as your base document. Okay. Well, that's mm. exciting. All right. Uh, how... And a lot of, lot of other apps, Rosie, There's, yeah. and there are a lot of programs. So even if you've never been particularly concerned about your money and watching every dollar in the past, if you're now going to have to, to make sure you're okay, or even if you just want to make sure you're okay, mm. uh, there's things like Dave Ramsey. Mm-hmm. The, his his um, financial peace program. Uh, you can get books. I don't bother buying all the books. You can watch YouTube's on it where people work only with cash. Yeah, all those. It doesn't of work for. The, I know you tell me this, Mum, but the younger generation doesn't use it, cash. It's hard with cash. You can't well, since pay COVID. for things with cash. Since COVID, you cash school, tuck shop, everything. Yes, it's all, is all online. On card. But anyway, yeah. yes, I get it. So, so find yourself a system, find yeah. a program, stick with it. But also, when it comes to documenting other things, Mum, when it comes down to online versus in a diary. Mm. Does it have less or more weight? So I was thinking I use a, a little journal for when I write things mm. down for things. A hand journal. Not, not like for my divorce, analog, but for hand, yeah. but to remember things. But some people use just Google Calendar. Is that going to stand up in court or mediation as opposed to a handwritten thing? I think the court can be suspicious of those things because they can be retrofitted. Right, retrofitted. Um, in, you know what the I mean? The court is stuck in the olden days. No, Let's just well, be honest. But, but if you've got a book where each page is written on, mm. it's pretty hard then to go backwards and change an entry or add a different entry in without it becoming evident in the book. So actually your little manual books uh, okay. have more evidence. That's why police still use notebooks. Right. Yeah. So if you are a person who lives in the digital world, uh, in my other business I work with this one lady and she just refuses to have paper, mm. refuses, and everything she has, all her filing, everything is online. If you're one of those people, perhaps scan, do the diary entry, then scan it in. Yeah, that's what I do that. Yep. Okay. I do that. Um, I, I mean, there's bullet journals and all sorts of ways. I mean, there's a, there have been some studies, I think. I'm not a um, psychologist, but there seems to be a connection between physically writing something down and, you know, uh, processing it. Mm. So, so there's a lot of people who do bullet journals and things who just like to write things down. Mm. But, look, yeah, do it and scan it. Yeah. And you've got it on digital and, and make the book as small as you like. One thing I want to say is don't go into long, long stories for each day. You'll okay. never keep it up. Yeah. Um, and you can't do a long, long entry without, I'm afraid, venturing into emotional and psychological. Right. So this so, is, so <laughs> you're saying leave the emotion out of the documentation mm-hmm. yep. and just be factual? It's business. Okay. So what kind of... So let's let's for example say they're picking up the kids mm-hmm. because their ex has decided he doesn't want them today mm-hmm. is bailing on his mm. time. How do you how would you recommend someone write that down? Okay, um, collect, without emotion, without too much emotion. Or, okay, uh, date, time. Yep. Collected the kids and name which kids you've collected uh, from school. Had a text message from ex. Uh, he couldn't arrive today and and then you will have your text message on your phone mm-hmm. that's part of the evidence you can print it out or or whatever to put it in there mm. or just um know that you can look through your diary get that date and then find the note on your phone and look in an ideal world that would be great to mm. just be like write the note stick the, the mm. text message there and you've got it yeah um but in it but everybody's very busy so yeah. but just know that if you don't do that yeah, in about two remember. years, you, you are going to have to be searching through looking for that yeah, text message or, and or you might just completely relevant. remembered it. Well, that might be the first time of a long time when he doesn't see the children. So you'll be able to go, oh, the last time he saw the kids was this yeah. date yeah. and from this date I've been picking them up. So it, you don't know it's important until Until later. you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about insurance, mm. protecting your butt. And don't put things like this is the fourth time this week or anything snarky because... Yeah. 
um, you don't know who's going to be reading it and someone might read it out loud in mm. a court. So just very factual. So again, on the kids' situation mm. that we've talked about and we've even interviewed the creator mm. of the Our Children platform. Yes. Uh, which is a co-parenting platform yeah, Laurie, where Laurie you can books. write. I'll put the link to the episode. Um, but where you can, it's all kept in the one spot. Yes, that's a good app. Um, that is helpful. But if you are using a co-parenting app, still realize it you still have to trawl through it all oh. to find everything so still perhaps keep a diary mm. and also don't um keep, try and keep it factual and short in yes. there as well yes. you shouldn't use the apps as a way to continue with the fighting yeah because you know if it gets presented to the court uh, well that's something like i was going to ask you. you so that documentation mm. if they're getting if there's just constant fighting and mm. mm. um, we're doing an episode on that soon mm. uh, you know how can people make sure that when they do their documentation if they are getting the abuse or if they're getting the nasty mm. how do they document that with keeping the emotion out of it just keep a copy of it. It's, yeah, it's Got received an email Like you're today. a reporter, a police reporter. Received know. email from a globe. Yes. Um, date. Accusing time. me of this. You, yeah. you do a little narrative, so you, otherwise it's just got email, got email, got okay, email. Okay, yes, true. Yeah, so you do a little bit of it, and then you don't say, accusing me of this, mm. and and you don't need to say, you know, he's always saying that and he knows very well that I don't, know. don't get into that. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm trying to think, like maybe a neutral reporter right. who's just looking at you moving through life and they just write down what you've done, mm. you know. Because when you go to a lawyer, if you have to, if you can't negotiate yourselves, mm. if, you, if you have to go to see a lawyer or if you're going to mediation, and maybe the in the like you say, Mum. Sometimes the lawyer's job is to listen to what the client's saying mm. and then pull out the important information. It's sort of all just the facts, man. And they just go, the facts. And so they say, "Did did any of this occur?" And then the client might be sitting there racking their brains, going, "Yeah, I think that happened, or he did this, or we mm. we agreed to this, but I don't remember where." The people who've been listening to this podcast can then go check their notes, they can. check their diary, yep. go on this date, this date, this date, and this date. And, and I have clients bring their diaries in, yeah, and say, "Here, I've kept this diary." So it's so it is really helpful. Mm. Has there been times when documentation has saved someone's bacon? Oh, always, always, always. I, oh, so many times. Sorry, whenever there's a dispute, he says, she says, but if someone can go. He says, she says, and here's the document that proves it. Mm -hmm. Well, then that's just, that's the Brilliant. winner. Because the court's always looking for objective or independent evidence. Okay. And the very nature of a family is that most things happen in behind closed doors between two people and no one's taking notes. Yeah. You don't get receipts for no. anything. So so it's if you can find some documentation. I've, I've heard of cases, there's a case where um, someone was trying to prove a de facto relationship existed, mm. even though this person, the man was married. Um, the, uh -oh. the court found that his relationship with this other woman was a de facto relationship at the same time. And, Mama. The, and of course, he denied it at the beginning. But she was able to produce um, emails between them both, receipts, proof of their bank account, uh, overseas travel tickets together. Just and the, they all, each of them in on their own, um, wouldn't have seemed very important. But if you put the whole lot together, it showed that they actually were living in a genuine on a, together on a genuine domestic basis. Mm. And even though he was still going home to his wife some of the time. So documents wow. can prove, yeah. So documents can save your bacon. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So let's talk about those different personality types. Mm. And I guess this documentation can really save your bacon when oh, it comes it to manipulative and controlling because they love making up. Mm. Well, it just stops the argument as well because yeah. you, you you can find, what did one of our reviewers call them, ping pong letters? Yes. Tis, tisn't, t did, didn't, yes, no, yes, no. If they go, she did this. And you go, no, she didn't, and here's the proof. Mm. And that just puts it That's the end of down. that. Yeah, that's the end of that. And argument. it also starts highlighting to the other, the, the, your ex, if they're manipulative, controlling lawyer. That's right. That perhaps maybe what they're saying isn't always the take, truth. That's right. It, um, it, it and, does and it is, that. It is like a shield of protection for mm. people. So documentation, if you've got a narcissistic or manipulative mm. controlling ex, that is your shield. I mean, you'd think truth would be your shield. But, but it's not. it can't be. You've got to be able to get – so if you say something and they say something, the court uh, 
doesn't know if both of you are lying yeah. because it's coming out of a marriage and, and your feelings towards each other obviously mm. weren't the same as when you were married. So, yes, the documentation is, is the key. And, yes, I often write letters uh, with proof not to con- not to convince the other person be- because they know it. they know they were telling lies. Yeah. They know it's true what we're saying. But, um, the but to make have... the lawyer have a second look at their client and mm. perhaps give them their client some stern words mm. um, and double check in future. Yeah. Or maybe in extreme cases uh, we're obliged to not act if a person's not being candid right. with the court. Right. That we're expected to do the right thing, mm. which is say to them, if you don't give all the documents, if you, you know, then we can't continue to act for you. Okay. All right. Mm. And then when it comes down to uh, high conflict mm. with documentation, again, it's just stopping it just the argument. It down. It's yeah. just stopping the argument. And, you know, if they know that you've kept some records and you produce a few of them or even produce them all, then that just stops the whole thing they because go, oh. they don't bother. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. There's no I'm point in fighting. Gonna, that's right. I'm not going to get away with all of that. <laughs> yeah, but it also could just be, oh, I didn't realise, I'd forgotten because that was three years ago. I it forgot. It does happen. Okay. Mm. And then with Amicable, I guess some people, I, and I know we've had some people in our members that say, oh, I feel, I feel bad even taking photos of super statements or whatever mm. because we are amicable. I feel like I'm sneaking behind their back. But... Uh, then later on, we've got others that said, I wish I had mm. <laughs> because I did feel bad. Then I didn't document anything and yeah. now I'm stuck So you, because you the can, amicable becomes Once not it's settled, amicable. you can delete it, you know, yeah. and yeah. and I would use it to check that they give you the right information. So your client, your lawyer or you can yeah. ask them for their statement Yes, because your photo is not really going to be admissible in evidence. Yeah. But if you ask them for their statement or ask them for their balance, um, you'll be able to check and make sure it's They're correct. They're not telling Paul According to what you've got, yes. Ah, so I clever. know it sounds sticky, but you're probably saving just a lot of trouble and you don't really know how a person's going to be when you're no longer in a relationship mm. with you, mm. you know. Okay, and then we've got the avoidant. Mm. So how does documentation help with avoidant? Well, it just allows you to write the narrative and that that they won't object to. Yeah. You know, because if you if you're writing in it and it's factual and you've checked it with your diary, mm. uh, then the avoidant person will accept generally that that's all right. Mm. Okay, oh, if she's kept a diary or he's kept a diary, that'll be okay. Yeah. That should be right. So and and it also helps push things along. Sometimes you might need evidence of something to push them along. For instance, if you've been late with your bank pa- with your payments and you've had letters from the bank, they might be needed to show the court that the court needs to step in and get mm. either the house sold or unfreeze this bank account or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So this is a message from the universe. Yes. To the person listening right now, either open a folder on your desktop or somewhere where they can't see it if they're still mm. living together. Open a folder or paper, notebook, whatever, Grab and kiss. start putting things in. Yep, and and look, honestly, I've had clients who can't face this record-keeping thing. Yeah. It doesn't have to take long. I've told you about the little address book. Um, don't use pencil. Yeah. Because that can be rubbed out. Lol. Do it in biro and, and, um, and do it right away. Just use an old school book or something. Yeah. And I don't want people to be dwelling on it and worrying about the detail just note it down just jot it down yeah that's what it if you want to have a personal journal where you're working through your feelings that's a different one can you get somebody else to do the journal the, the documentation for you or it does not stand up as well uh no because i i don't think it does because you need to be able to say to the court i did this and here it is i i wrote these notes on the right as the day my practice was to write it the next day Mm -hmm. and here it is okay you know parenting plans Mm. or kind of verbal maybe a couple of emails back and forth Mm. not an official parenting plan Mm. but some sort of agreement is that really important to document it is really important because someone might be arguing for instance that you can only have supervised time Mm. but there was unsupervised time before they got really mad at you okay and so you've got that so you've got it there. Mm. So it's maybe even a good idea to have like a, hey, here's my understanding of our current arrangements. 
Yes. Or you Do be, you agree? You could be a little bit sneakier than that. Okay. <laughs> <It's an> avoidant, <laughs> with the avoidant person in particular, you can say, oh, you know, hi, um, Cheryl, just confirming that I'll pick little Johnny up on Thursday as usual. See? Uh, and as see usual. what I did there? Yes, see I see what, what you there. did there. Yep. And, um, and drop him off at your place on, on uh, Friday afternoon. Yeah. That sort of thing. And so, then keep that yes. if they say yes and that's your documented Well, they don't have to proof. say anything. Yeah. If they don't object to it, yes. it, it, it's it's acceptable in the court size as pretty well proof that it did happen. And right. it also refers back to the usual, you know, so yes. you're just kind of leaving a little trail. It's, it's a bit like tearing off little bits of yellow ribbon and yeah. putting them on a tree as you walk along and the hopefully trail. you won't need it no hopefully you won't need it but it will save your bacon if mm. if, you, if something happens up. something changes or if it comes up you mm. don't know what you're walking into in yeah, the end I you guess. just don't so just i just wish all my clients had kept some sort of documentation yeah. So this is the universe talking to you. So go to typo. Oh, I shouldn't say bread. Go somewhere, get a book, get a notebook, get a pen. And and, and if, if you are a computer person, scan it, put it in a folder, keep it all together. So three years down the track, you can go, oh, yeah, I've got a list of that. Can I tell you a funny story? Please do. Do you mom. remember when furry notebook covers were all the go? Yes. I remember a lady she had a green furry notebook and it had to get handed up in the witness box. <laughs> it looks so funny, the green furry cover. And what it was, and, and the reason I'm saying this is to people, you don't have to have a fancy book. Don't um, have a green furry just, but, you can, but you can. But It would be nice she to hold while you're in the witness box. room and just found something they weren't using. Yes, yes. Yes. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just start. So is this, ma'am, your green yes. furry <laughs> notebook? In the hands of the barrister. It looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it tempted to, or, or not to choose the most ridiculous looking I'll, I'll, notebook. I'll take the notebook and call you it. You had exhibit, a big love heart exhibit shape. Exhibit one a. a. Yeah, mine was a cardboard heart shaped book. <laughs> yeah, you used to write all your things in there. Yeah. Not about dolls, no. of course. Yeah. But yes. All right. So, so yeah, it was it was exhibit A. Yeah, <laughs> I exhibit would. One. I would love to know that anyone listening today mm. is going to go. Yes call to action i'll start writing i'm going to start noting noting it down Mm. um and you will thank yourself later all right thanks mum you you might not thank yourself but you won't be kicking yourself oh that's a good point (laughs) maybe we should call this episode you might not thank yourself for it but you won't kick you kicking yourself and download that form and start doing your little finance planning okay all right thanks everybody thanks mum If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.